Did you know that your Tesla, your iPhone, or even your favorite Google product may have all been paid for by the blood of children walked literally to death? Tech giants are literally making their money off the backs of children. Let's take the example of Elon Musk's Tesla. The richest man in the world now needs 6,000 tons of cobalt from the southeastern Katanga region of the DRC. That's four times as much as Tesla used in 2019. So, demand is skyrocketing. All this activity in DRC comes at a grave cost. Not one that can be calculated in dollars, but in human lives. As stated in a landmark lawsuit in the US, the exploitation of DRC's valuable cobalt by five tech giants is part of a system of forced labor that's led to the death and serious injury of children. Images in the court documents filed in the US display the maimed and disfigured limbs of the child minors. Tunnel collapses and unsafe work conditions have been cited as the reasons for this tragic reality. The children are paid as little as $1.50 a day, working six days a week, often driven by poverty, quitting school to work the mines. As Siddharth Kara, a researcher on modern slavery notes, I've never encountered or documented a more severe asymmetry in the allocation of income between the top of the supply chain and the bottom. So once again, Africa's riches are its curse, and that, no doubt, is what needs to change first. So this TikTok by African Stream points out the harsh reality that many of these giant tech companies, these incredibly wealthy individuals, some of the richest people on the planet Earth like Elon Musk, are quite literally making their profits at the expense of literal children in cobalt mines, particularly in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Now there is a lot to say about this because of course we have to mention the United States and other countries' history of colonialism. I mean particularly in Democratic Democratic Republic of Congo. It was formerly a colony that was held by the Belgians. But the United States has also played a critical role in keeping DRC incredibly poor, as the United States has participated in many interventions in the political system of DRC. And unfortunately, the exploitation of people in the Democratic Republic of Congo has only increased as a result of the increasing demand for renewable energies, but especially battery powered technology, things like electric vehicles, for for example, where there is this increasing pressure for what should be an incredibly valuable resource that gives wealth to the people of the Democratic Republic of Congo, but instead is becoming a source of increasing struggle and strife. For a country that has already faced an extreme past of brutal colonization and civil war, they are put in a position now where literal children are working in these mines and foregoing any type of schooling, all for an incredibly low, low wage wage, which even the low wages really need to be put aside considering the fact that they're literal children and shouldn't be working in the first place, especially not in such an incredibly dangerous industry. But there are two main takeaways from this. First and foremost is the simple fact that the products that we buy should not be as cheap as they are the profits should also not be distributed the way that they are. There is no excuse for people like Elon Musk literally being billionaires while children are working in these mines. And it just goes to show that the harsh reality is, is that the profits of big tech companies and the cheapness of the products that we enjoy on a daily basis all stem from the child labor that is used to produce these products. Another takeaway from this is that Electric vehicles simply cannot be the climate change solution to our dependence on fossil fuels. Fundamentally, at the end of the day, we need high-speed public transit. We need to shift away from car-centric development because as more and more people start purchasing electric vehicles, it only increases this problem of child slavery. This is why it is so critical to look at the development model of countries like China that have emphasized high-speed rail as opposed to car-centric development. Because car-centric development, unfortunately, has incredibly brutal consequences around the world. First, with a history of warfare in order to control the supply and demand of oil. But now going forward, it will be increasingly centered around the supply of cobalt. And the people that lose out the most in this are in theory the people who should be benefiting the most. If we have an increased demand for cobalt, the countries that have been the victim of colonization, which have cobalt, should be the main people profiting 
from the value of it. And that we should have a climate policy that centers empowering people in countries that have been the victim of colonialism and actually trying to make reparations for the extreme amount of harm committed by the United States and other major Western powers. But until that happens, large tech companies in the United States will continue to profit off the backs of children.